Hello and welcome, my name is Nilaus and this is the second tutorial for Angels Mods Refining and we are going to dive into the more advanced parts of refining. In the previous uh, tutorial we were looking at the very basic parts of refining and now it's time to look into the more advanced part. However, since this is advanced, I will not be able to sit, build it as we uh, walk through it. So I have pre-built it and we're going to walk through it uh, slowly. Basically, the very first step is the part we know. We take our, uh, in this case, geolite. I'm going to use geolite as the example. The geolite ore comes in, getting crushed. That generates some geolite ore, some crushed geolite ore and some crushed stone. Goes in here, gets stacked up and we have it output with some uh, um, some filter inserters it goes onto the belt and then we go to the first level of refinement which is where we create chunks we do that in flotation cells the flotation cells require the crushed jubilite plus a lot of purified water and the output is then you can see here two crushed jubilite in and two jubilite chunks out so there's no loss of, of um, of materials here in this refinement process however we are getting some small pink geodes they can be used for something later for generating gems pretty cool we are also having some waste material there are two options for this waste and that one is to just uh, avoid it using one of these but i do not recommend it what because we're going to use exactly this hydrofluoric hydrofluoric wastewater or fluoric wastewater we're going to use that later but in this case let's uh, see if we are going to get it in here we have a lot of chunks we have a lot of uh, purple geodes and now it's time to go into the next level so this next level is the leaching plant where you can see here we need hydrofluoric acid hydrofluoric acid is a nasty uh, piece of work and it's difficult to make except we have actually a lot of fluoric wastewater so we take the fluoric wastewater in goes into a hydro plant where it generates one fluoride and then some mineralized water and some purified water. I have chosen to void the mineralized water and the mineralized water and the pure water. The pure water could of course be looped back into this one, but I don't bother in this setup. What we're getting is a lot of fluoride ore and the fluoride ore can be made into hydrofluoric acid together with some sulfuric acid, which we just brought in here. It also generates something calcium sulfate that which I suppose is going to be used somewhere, but for the time being just store it and make sure that it doesn't uh, run full. We take the hydrofluoric acid coming back here and this goes back into feeding these four tanks. It doesn't require much and the, the brilliant part about this is that it's actually scaled. So the speed here is 0 0.75, 0 0.75. They, are, they fit, they take two in and get two out for in two seconds. Two in, two out in two seconds. So they're perfectly balanced. Also the waste hydrofluoric and the hydrofluoric acid is balanced so it, it seems more dangerous uh, difficult than it actually is so keep that in mind keep it balanced keep it flowing in a closed soup closed loop it's going to be fine so what we have here is actually the crystals that comes in here and we are actually kind of running out of these and now we go to the last part of the enrichment this is much easier right however there are a couple of things to note here first is it doesn't require any additional materials. It just basically takes it in and gets it out. However, what is important today is it's actually working at double capacity as the lab. The other one takes four in, gets four out in two seconds. So keep in mind, in this case, I should actually only have had two to balance the production here. That's why this one is empty and this one gets filled up because it can just clean out this one. You can see here, this is empty, but if I took these out, I think it would actually fit much better. However, uh, the another example of this is if we look at the crafting cost. So these ones, the blue ones we're using, or the gray ones even, they require steel, no problem, stone bricks, no problem, electronic circuit board corresponds to the red circuit, so not really a big, big issue. However, these require aluminium plates, so that's more advanced material, as well as electronic logic board, which corresponds to the blue circuits in Bob's mods. So that's a lot more late game. So keep that in mind that this is something you get only late game. Now, I will actually, in this case, I'll stop these because I don't want to flow. So that's how we enrich it and we have a lot more, a lot of these uh, crystals. Now the issue uh, is, or what I'd like to show is what, what happens when you sort each of them. So that's where we go over here. Now the first one is the crushed. This is what we saw last time. This takes four in and gets four out. Pretty cool. It has, it generates twice as much 
iron output as it generates copper output and then a bit of uh, slag. Don't uh, discount the slag, that's a very important uh, material. Now, when we go through the first refinement process, you can see we're getting a lot more. We're getting six different materials, again, iron, copper, slag, but now also, in this case, uranium iron ore. The reason we're getting uranium iron ore is because I'm running the uranium power mod. If not, then it would be slightly different. But in this case, you can also see that we're getting aluminium ore and is that that's zinc ore as well. So we're getting much more different parts. We're taking, however, this one, we're taking seven in and getting seven out. So perfectly balanced again. Now, the next one, this is now the crystals. We are taking nine in and getting nine out. Here, it's again, one third goes back into iron. I believe that without uranium power, this might be slightly different. Maybe it's three, two versus uh, for, for iron versus copper, uh, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, what you can see here is that we have one more material, and that's silver. So you're also getting silver in this one, and still this, this is pretty good, but it requires a few extra steps. This is the part that's really important about Angel's mod, is that it requires a lot of space. Now the last one, which doesn't require any hydrofluoric acid or anything crazy like that, it takes 10 input and gets 10 output. So here you can say half of it is the high volume goods, the five uh, the, the five high value or high volume is three iron and two copper which is a pretty good balance actually but we're going to get a hell of a lot of zinc that we don't need for anything a lot of silver that we don't need for anything the difference is that the slag of the previous one here we have the slag over here we have the slag changed to tungsten tungsten is really difficult to make so it's a really good way you somewhere you're going to have to do this to get tungsten there are a few ways to get tungsten this is the most advanced most high powered version of uh, uh, of the ores and uh, not high power but it's the latest ga late game uh, ore in Bob's mod now let's look at something also that's interesting so this one is takes a pure line in and gets random stuff not random but uh, different things in there's also a different option which basically says this is what we've shown up here this row but the other ones are corresponding now there's also the other one where we take a fixed difference in and get, um, get something, uh, get a unique thing out. That didn't make any sense. But in this case, let's have a look. So if I take crushed sapphire, two of each, I get four iron ore. That's actually a pretty good uh, value compared to normal, just putting the crushed sapphire into an, a smelter. But where, if I did that on the smelter, I would get three crushed sapphire becomes two iron plates. So in this case, you can get a higher yield by combining crushed sapphire with crushed gibberellite pretty good uh, value so uh, consider this there are three different tiers here this is a low tier requiring crushed it consists of iron copper let's see if i can remember uh, the lead the galena and the tin these are requiring just the crushed components now the next uh, tier the medium tier is actually using chunks so you can see uh, the quartz requiring two different chunks and a mineral catalyst let's see what else is mid tier um, I believe the nickel ore is mid here as well. Then we have, oh, okay, the aluminium ore is actually mid here as well. That's very nice. And I believe the zinc is mid here as well. What about, no. And then the higher, high tier is uh, requiring crystals. You can see here it requires now three different types of crystals. That's silver and that's cobaltite. It is gold and it's titanium rotile titanium and then there is a one more step above that which is the tungsten so let's have a look at this i actually put this up down here just to illustrate the idea of this so if you want to generate tungsten in vast quantities you can actually take two purified geolite two purified stereotype two purified bimonium and one mineral catalyst the mineral catalyst is quite easy to make because the mineral catalyst is here it just comes from mineral sludge mineral sludge is quite easy to make from some slag slurry and so that's where you get the slag you add some sulfuric water uh, acid and then you treat it again and then it becomes you filter it here this one you filter it with some water and then it becomes a nice uh, uh, nice mineral slurry and that's the part needed here so you can see here this if i set up a path like this for uh, for each of these three different materials I will actually be able to create a lot of tungsten quite easily and that's what we're going to need at some point late game 
So having something like this set up, and I would generally recommend to use robots for bringing things back and forth. Though there is one issue with the robots. This one is actually quite well balanced, and you don't get that balance with robots. You can't see it transparently how well it's balanced. This one could be made much smaller. I mean, I could just take two of these, four, four, and two, and then it crack through the whole process. I would recommend actually setting up here, setting some, uh, uh, using these big blobs in between, because then you can take these ones out at similar, at a different level, and bring them over to where you need it. Also setting uh, wire conditions here in order to limit the output so that it doesn't run empty. For example, this one would definitely run empty if I put put something up here. However, um, there is a way to avoid that. Um, now it's empty and I could actually just say one, two, three, four and go back. And then saying only do that when the crystal is larger than how much do we want in 100, right? That's not what I want, less than the other way. Great. Right, so now we make sure that this one is always has something in it. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to show. I wanted to show the different refinement process, the three tiers of refinement process, coming from first the flotation cell, then the leaching plant, and then the ore refinery, going into different types of uh, of uh, of sorting processes and the benefits of each. What is really important is that this one consider this the bread and butter. This is a really good process for generating because you want some slag as well. The slag is, is quite useful, so don't neglect it. It's also very tempting just to use this one because it's very easy. The one where you get raw iron ore out, it's easier to manage, but it's um, you actually need the slag at some point. Uh, also, then you can use this level for just getting getting a bit of aluminium, a bit of zinc, a bit of uh, uh, silver. You can also get gold from the different ones you can see here at the crystal level. That's pretty easy to do. So uh, keep that in mind. You can also get titanium from the steratite and whereas from the sapphirite, you can get titanium from there. And titanium is also something you need a lot of. So that's basically it. And then finally, the tungsten is the most difficult one, but that uh, once you have it, you can see it's generating quite fast. It is also declining here as well. So that's what I wanted to show, and that should give you a pretty good idea about the more advanced sorting and refinement process of Angel's Mods. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you do, then please leave a like. If you don't, or if you have some comments, please leave a comment. I'm very happy to see if I'm forgetting something. I will also go further into the last parts of the refinement process with gems and slurry, but that will be in another episode. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in a future episode. Bye.